John Roper from Trig Avionics, I'm not accustomed to sitting on this side of the instrument panel <laughs> that you've kind of set up here in front of us. Uh, but this is such a, a cool, innovative line of very small avionics. And I know that you've got a couple of interesting things going on as we look at the uh, the transition to ADSB and the mandate coming up. So start from wherever you'd like and just take us through what you've got. Okay, well, a little bit of background for Trig, if people haven't heard of Trig. We're a, a UK company, mm -hmm. and uh, we were we started in 2004, and our raison d'etre, our expertise in it is in making uh, light avionics that are compact, certified, and suitable for ADS-B and mode S. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, our first product in the range, which is this unit down here, uh, is a conventional mark with transponder. It's called the TT-31, and it's a particularly uh, beneficial uh, transponder for customers who perhaps are thinking of upgrading from their mode C transponder. Mm -hmm. um, Many people have got Bendix King KT-76 units in their aircraft, and the TT-31 is the easiest and the most efficient retrofit transponder. You can literally take your old Bendix King out of your tray and put the TT-31 in, obviously using a Part 145 installer, because it has to be signed off, and that will give you mode S. It okay. also does TIS traffic, very, very easy to use, really nice bright display, and it takes you uh, a significant step towards creating a, an ADS-B capability. Uh, if you then fit the trig tray, which most people we suggest buy with the mm -hmm. transponder, that has the GPS WAS socket in the back, and that enables you then to have an ADS-B 1090 extended squitter out transponder. And of course, many of the uh, viewers will be aware that for a full ADS-B in capability, you must have in the US a ADS-B out certified and compliant transponder. Right. And the TT-31 and the TT-22 mm -hmm. are both class one transponders. So they're ideal for that role. And one of the things that really, I think, impresses people about this, and, and you said that it's kind of interesting to be able to take that and hold it in your hand. And yeah. it really is, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I could equate that to as far as size is concerned. But you can see that it fits very easily in the palm of your hand, and yet it's a very full-functioned uh, transponder and instrument that, that will really help people out in, 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 their, in their cockpit, but fit almost anywhere. Absolutely. And if I perhaps can turn this demo unit around here, this shows the philosophy of Trig's units. These are fantastically popular for pilots who've got limited panel space or there's very little room behind the panel. Mm -hmm. So a lot of glider pilots use them. They can be powered with a battery. They don't need a chunky aircraft power supply. The, the actual transponder can be fitted. The controller here can be fitted in a compact mount or it can be fitted in a two and a quarter inch round. So if you've got a sort of vintage aircraft, mm -hmm. then that obviously from a style point of view looks often looks more, more preferable. And the controller is connected to this uh, hardware box and that sits on an avionics tray and that can be mounted anywhere in the airframe. So it gives huge amounts of flexibility and scope to where you install your avionics. And we have many customers who say to us that because they were able to fit a trig unit, then they could fit other avionics on the panel, which mm -hmm. otherwise they just wouldn't have been able to accommodate. So yeah, it stacks up um, in terms of size. It's very, very lightweight. and. There's no lack in capability. You're talking about a really compliant solution, which is more than future-proof um, when installed in your aircraft. And you talk about that future-proofing a lot, and that goes back to the, the TT unit as well, that it's, a, it's a, a unit that will grow with the pilot and his airplane as something new comes down the pike. This is a, this is a unit that, that a pilot can feel comfortable saying, I can get this now, but it's not going to be obsolete in a year or two. Absolutely. And uh, one of the key things that we at Trig are working towards is, is broadening the amount of third-party products that our transponders will work with. Mm -hmm. So if we perhaps look at ADS-B as a technology, um, people are beginning to learn more about what they need for uh, a compliant system. Essentially, you'll require a, um, a certified out Mm -hmm. doesn't actually have to be a transponder, but uh, in our case, a, a MODIS ADS-B 1090S transponder is, is our solution. 1090 for us is a very, very logical uh, path to go because it can be used in any aircraft at any altitude. There is no restriction. Mm -hmm. um, 
1090 can be used above 18,000 feet and it can also be used internationally in any country. Um, so that we feel that's a really sensible route to, route to go. Um, the TT31 also enables you to hook it up to a position source because for the mandate you need a, a compliant position source. Mm -hmm. So that's typically a WAS GPS. We've had a, an STC program running uh, since May last year when we achieved C166B compliance. And what that requires us to do in America, the FAA requires us to have an STC for every installation on every aircraft type. So we started with uh, Mooney, and mm -hmm. we've extended that to other aircraft. It's the hot news off the press, literally <laughs> as of yesterday, we learned that we've now got uh, Cessna and Piper aircraft included with our, in, within our AML list, okay. which is terribly exciting. It means that more pilots can, can consider TRIG and mm -hmm. use our STC. We also have uh, two compliant GPS, WAS GPS units, mm -hmm. the Free Flight 1201, and also the NextNav Mini unit. And both of those have been tested and proven to work with our, with our compliance solution. Um, so if you have a Mooney and you choose a 1201 and you fit a TT31, you, you have a, a system that is, is almost there. There's mm -hmm. one final ingredient that you require in the US, and that's some source of air ground determination. And for that, that can be a squat switch, um, an airspeed switch, or a, um, a data computer, an air data computer. And those are the sort of main aspects that you need to cover off to satisfy the regulations. But the, the inclusion of, of Cessna and Piper on the AML has to be there's a lot of, of airplanes that are of those makes that are older airplanes yep. that are going to need to come up to, to code. And a lot of guys that are flying those airplanes, and women as well, are thinking, what's it going to cost me yep. to make this airplane compliant with the mandate when it comes yep. along? And this could be a very viable option. Absolutely. I mean, I can say the transponder alone typically is around 500, 700 bucks to mm -hmm. Uh, an alternative solution. So we think that TRIG represents immediately uh, great value, but the cost savings don't just start with the actual purchase. Um, also the installation, because of the nature of the TRIG transponder, uh, using existing antenna, using existing wiring, you're not having to drill holes in your aircraft or um, have a, an extensive um, fitting or installation mm -hmm. routine. Uh, and in fact, of course, if you're fitting it just to get Mode S, um, it really is the most efficient way that you can fit Mode S in an aircraft if you've got the BK transponder. I want to go back to kind of the beginnings again that you talked a little bit about the, the genesis of the company. They are small instruments. Yep. And I'm wondering where you felt like, I mean, what, what was it in your experience that said, some, somebody needs to start making small, compact, lightweight instruments for the certified airplane market. Okay. Yeah, Andy Davis, the CEO of the company, mm -hmm. um, recognized that there was a, a requirement in Europe that had been set by the Civil Aviation Authority in the UK, but also throughout EASA, for a MODES transponder solution, which was small, light, and affordable. And there wasn't, to be fair, really a suitable product at that time, um, back in 2004. So the company really had its, its origins in that requirement. And right the way through, uh, we've always seen that there, there has to be innovation in our products. Uh, we like to think of them as being smart and uh, affordable and also future-proof. You know, we recognize that ADSB is a challenge for pilots because it does involve investment. We're trying to take the pain away from that to make it as affordable as it can be, mm -hmm. but also providing really high quality um, sales and support service for our products. Speaking of which, uh, you've recently just made an agreement with a, a US shop to do a lot, all of your maintenance and, and to have all that done. I'm sure, you, as you said, you're a UK company. You know, we don't want to pull the unit out of your airplane, send it back to, to the UK to have it worked on. So tell us about your agreement. Yeah, well, we've had a, we've had a presence in America for quite some time now. Mm. Um, however, uh, we are very delighted to announce that this week we've got a, an arrangement that we've uh, shared at the show with Mid-Continent Instruments. Mm -hmm. They are now our service center for the US. 
and they are as excited as we are to be working <laughs> together. They love the product line. They're very impressed with the training that's been going on between the two companies. So their technical capability is first class mm -hmm. and we are absolutely confident that they're going to provide customers with an, a really, really good experience, um, post-sales experience. Um, we have about 75 dealers in the US. We're growing that dealership. Um, and approved trig dealers should also be a good source of information and knowledge about our products. So I think customers should be reassured um, when they want to think about buying trig because it might be a brand that they are not as familiar with. We're also unique in the industry because we actually offer an additional warranty on any warranty repair. Mm -hmm. So we have a two year warranty scheme, but if a unit comes back, and it's repaired, we give the customer another two years warranty. And I think that's the kind of peace of mind that customers are after, mm -hmm. but it also demonstrates our commitment to customers because we have real faith in our products. And uh, you know, dealers tell me that they are, Trig products are amongst the most reliable that they install, so that's great. Great for, great, great for business mm -hmm. and great for customers. We're hearing a lot at this show about open architecture and the capstone standard. Yep. Where is Trig on, on the open architecture scale? Okay. Well, Trig are obviously uh, working with other partners. Mm -hmm. um, Aspen's Connected Panel Initiative is one that we're happy to support. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I've already mentioned that uh, companies like FreeFlight provide solutions that are compatible with Trig products. I think the, the interesting thing is that we have taken some of those third-party products mm -hmm. and as part of our SDC program demonstrated that Trig products are entirely compliant with them. So yeah, that's something that we feel very excited about. It gives um, customers more choice, um, and it demonstrates to them that they shouldn't be fearful of those uh, products coming together and working with Trig equipment. When you look at this instrument in the instrument panel of the airplane, and why don't we just kind of go through, because we've got a few minutes here, uh, let's, let's talk about some of the features, and I know, I think we've got it plugged in and operating over there, don't we? Yeah, we have do the- we, Do we, we have, have the, power? Yeah, we do have the TT31 unit there. Um, I think, uh, if I may just sort of talk you through some of the, the main aspects of the, the transponder, we've talked about its plug and play capabilities. Mm -hmm. It's very, very easy to use. Um, you can see just on the front panel, it shows your uh, tail number. It also shows the value that you're squawking, your squawk code. Very easy to actually adjust that on the rotary knob. Um, just literally, we use your thumb to press that so you mm -hmm. can carry on flying. It's not two-handed operation. For both of our transponders, it's one-handed operation. And the display is very bright. It has a, a photo sensor, um, and it can actually be adjusted to the, suit the light level in your stack as well mm -hmm. on the 31. 31 also comes with uh, a flight timer and a stopwatch. And some customers really like the altitude alarm, which can be hardwired so that if you go above or below a set preset altitude, mm -hmm. it'll actually tell you that you've, you've lost altitude, which, uh, you know, being a pilot myself, I know <laughs> that it's sometimes good to have a helpful hand in the cockpit. Absolutely. And uh, so that's a feature that's quite neat. Uh, the other thing to say about the, the transponder, uh, the, the TT22 transponder, which is the, the one on the, uh, the top there, mm -hmm. that has the same class one capabilities as the TT31. It's a smaller display, it's an LCD display, which is entirely practical for daylight operations. Mm -hmm. It has a, a small side light, and the LCD actually becomes more contrasty and darker as the light levels go up, so it's, it's fine in full bright sunlight. It, the TT22 controller is also splash proof, so it's suitable for use in open cockpits. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it's, it's easy to use even with a gloved hand, not a problem at all. Um, and I can attest to that. I fly, <laughs> I fly uh, in an open cockpit aircraft mm -hmm. um, in Scotland in the winter, so I've always got my gloves on and uh, <laughs> yeah, it works a treat. Very easy to use and you know, most transponders are thought of as being set and forget devices. Uh, and so yeah, they're fine. I know that this industry in particular, the avionics industry, is, is changing almost daily. It's, it's sort of like the, the computer industry, and there's a lot of, there are a lot of commonalities between computers and, and what avionics are today. So tell us kind of what's in the Trig Skunk Works, <laughs> if you will, if, if you've got anything that you can share with us that you might be thinking about, because obviously you have to innovate and change in order to Absolutely. be able to stay competitive in the industry. Yeah, sure, okay. Well, maybe, um, not quite in the skunk works, more out of the out of the door, literally, and about to about to be a a product for um, customers is our TY91 and TY92 radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, whilst I don't have that powered up on this stand here on my right and your left, um, 
The radio is shown there as a compact mount. It's the instrument at the front, at the top, uh, and that's actually a matching compact mount shown on the stand to our transponder, the TT22 transponder. Many people have been asking Trig for a radio that has all the same features and benefits of being easy to fit and a separate avionics tray. Mm -hmm. And so the TY91 and TY92 radio, which was actually, uh, you know, has been featured, is due to ship very soon. We have a ERC certification and a TSO certification for that. And so that's kind of, that's, that's not quite skunk works, I'm afraid, but it's, it's worthy, <laughs> worthy of a mention. Because our, our genuine desire is to offer customers choice. And so we do actually expect in the next year to be offering more avionics products. And perhaps it's no surprise to think that following our compact radio, you'd expect to see us produce a mark width radio um, mm -hmm. I would also suggest that we're hoping to follow that up with a, a NAVCOM. So yeah, we, we have plans. Uh, we certainly want to uh, you know, take the opportunity to look at what the market requires. And uh, we know that there's a real demand for both those products. In terms of ADS-B, we're also very conscious and we're, like many companies, looking at, at how ADS-B is developing. Um, we know there's huge interest in uh, an ADSB in solution, mm -hmm. and we have plans to develop a product line called the TA60, which will be an ADSB in receiver, a traffic receiver. Um, at this stage, the company uh, recognizes that there's lots of certi uncertified uh, UAT receivers, and so I think uh, we're happy to let that to other people mm -hmm. um, to, to use that sort of area of the market. So yeah, that's a that's a sort of nod nod to the future there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. a few things that are coming down the yeah. pike that yeah. um, that that folks can look for. Um, when you look at the industry in general, uh, and you look at the avionics industry and say, uh, what what surprises you about okay. what's coming out of these shops? Okay, I think the interesting thing is uh, there is a natural move towards complexity. Uh, and one of the things that I have as feedback from many of our dealers is that a lot of pilots are weekend warriors. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of pilots go out there and fly fairly infrequently. And if you're in Britain in the last year, you'd fly very little because the weather's been so atrocious. So, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think in some ways we're a little bit surprised at Trig that often pilots are faced with a really com complex uh, requirement to actually manage all these avionics which has lot have lots of functions and functionality and maybe like the home computer you don't use anything like the whole percentage of, of the capability of the software that you have on your machine mm -hmm. um, so what we're really keen on doing is presenting air aircraft and pilots with, with avionics that are really really effective very efficient affordable and get the job done and I think that's something that uh, that people really really like uh, that's certainly what they say to us about using trig products they find them just so straightforward and innovative but yet they do the job and they give the capability and the performance that, that they need so yeah that's 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 perhaps one thing yeah. John Roper thanks very much for taking some time to talk with us we have taken up 20 minutes, Fantastic. surprising as, as it may be, <laughs> and we could probably sit here and talk for another 20 and, and learn a lot more about it, but uh, I'm sure they can always go on your website and find out exactly what they need to know. Well, that's right, and they can go to, as I say, www.trigavionics.com, uh, or they can go to any of our approved dealers mm -hmm. in the U.S. to find out more. Aero TV's live coverage of the 56th annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show is brought to you in part by the following sponsors.